All right, so taking a little break from the Quest to 2400, I've been constantly complaining about this for a while, so how about we just try to fix this issue? If I am missing everything tactically, or pretty much everything, how about we study some tactics and actually work on this area of weakness in my game? So that's what we're going to be doing today. And uh, we're going to be kicking things off with a fresh start in Chess.com's tactics and their tactics trainer. And I'll go slow and explain my ideas. So we will uh, we'll go from there and just see how it goes. And in the meantime, I can say that I have been learning and working on the openings used in the Quest for 2400. So you're going to see some new lines and analysis in the Sicilian Khan, King's Indian, and with that English repertoire. Because you know, I, I've, I've gotten away with a few howlers in these games so far, and they're only going to get more difficult as we move up the rating ladder. So a bit of tactics. So let's go ahead and get started and we're starting at rating 1200 make sure that the screen is looking okay we are perfect and we're good to go here so one of the things I look at with tactics is the concept of checks captures threats this is when solving tactical puzzles the first thing you want to look at and the only check available is Queen h5 and that looks like that leads to mate so I'm gonna go ahead and play it we got six points and the next problem starts immediately. The only time it's going to stop is when we get one wrong or I get one wrong. Well, in this case, we're looking at checks again. Checks captures threats. First thing I look at is bishop g2 where the king is going to have to go somewhere. If h4, g5 will win a bishop. If g4, h5... And it looks like he comes back to h4 and we play g5. So let's go ahead and go with the most forcing move. Follow up with that one. And how about we win the queen? Seems like a good way to play chess. All right, continuing. Here, again, it still checks. If I take this pawn, forks the king of the rook, rook takes, pawn captures, the pawn's a runner, and there's nothing he can do to stop it. In this case, since he takes the pawn, I'll clean up by winning the rook. Okay. First thing that sticks out here is the knight is defending the rook. If my rook captures, the knight takes with check. My king comes back to g8 attacking the knight, and every escape square that the knight could run to is covered by my knight and the f-pawn. So let's go ahead and win a piece. All right, in this position, most forcing and aggressive check is rook takes bishop. After king takes, queen e2, king goes to c1, queen c2 mate, and that is my final answer. That's what I'm going with. Okay. So I feel like we've got to put black in check and then take the rook because we're definitely going to lose this knight unless we do something quickly here so difference between bishop e7 and bishop e3 if I go bishop e7 our passer is not going to be defended so that makes me think it's bishop e3 and then I'm going to take and nothing much he could do about that pawn, so he captures. Moving right along. All right, we're in check. So, ways to get out of check. Bishop f1 or king h2. If bishop f1, bishop d3 is not a possibility. because I can take. I want to play bishop f1 here. Okay. What did I get wrong? Was there some magic forcing response that I'm missing here? Let's find out. OK, 
Okay, this doesn't seem like much of a tactic, but... How come after king h2, queen d4 has to be played? To cover the c5 check, which is going to end in devastation, I guess. Alright, well... This is part of my problem because after bishop f1, I do what I normally do, maintain equality. We got 0, 0.00 after king g8 and queen c4. <laughs> okay. On to the next one. Let me make sure as I'm transitioning this is showing up okay. Okay, good. All right. Key squares. Looks like he's getting mated. Mated is. These pieces seem bad. What if I check? Am I winning something? Yes. Okay. Got candidate move that I'll look at first is rook takes. Knight f3 check also comes to mind because of the pin, but if rook takes, king takes, queen takes, the king moves, knight f3, king goes to d1, but then I'm not really seeing past that. What am I missing? I feel like that's got to be the first move though. So I'm going to go ahead and go with it. I guess that's the problem, isn't it? Okay. Check there is first reaction. No reason to play defense. After check, the king moves. You want to check, and then you want to check here. If he takes, we take and promote to queen. And the lady is good. Hmm. I have this impulse to take and then go queen h4, but after king f2, I'm not seeing the follow-up. What am I missing? And I've always found tactical study interesting because 90% of the puzzles that you get have nothing to do with your openings or how you play, because this definitely comes out of a king pawn and I would never get this position in a, a serious game. So when I'm missing these tactics, it really doesn't give me the motivation to figure out why. I would rather just study tactics from positions that I play. But that's me. It seems like an enhancement of the woodpecker method if you're just going to play one way forever. F5 afterwards? Let's try that. Or he just gives me the piece. I was calculating if king f2, f5, and then I didn't see what was going to happen there. Yet again, another one that I'm like, that's kind of a tactic, but not so much. All I did was trade. First reaction, I check here, setting up some sort of staircase scenario. If the queen takes, I check, and then I win the queen via skewer. Seems right, so we're going to go with it. And I think the stopping point on this first video, we're up to 1340 from 1200. We'll stop at 1500 for the, the first go. All right. Okay, so this is kind of important. It's definitely a check on the back rank, but the order matters. Because if you go queen c1 check, knight g1, queen takes g1, king takes g1, rook d1, the queen can capture. That's why you need to go rook first and allow the queen to be the one to do the work here. 
Okay. The bishop and king are overworked from the passers. Check. I ask your bishop to move. Your king is too far away because I can box you out and win. All right, first reaction. If I push the pawn, it comes with check. King takes, my rook checks, winning a bishop. King and pawn in games, you need passers. I want a passer. I queen with check, you don't have enough time. The rook is loose. I was looking first to see if there was any sort of convenient check. Queen c5 is first reaction where if the king steps on h6 or f6, I can go queen b6 and hit the rook. Up to 1400. Okay. Survey says, check, check. He blocks with the queen, we take. Got to get those staircase patterns down. All right. Looks like we can win the B after check and then knight check. Thank you. White's pawns are going this way. If we push, this rook goes there, knight checks, if he takes, we push. And his king can go there, which would result in him losing the rook. And that's why that is the answer. Uh, looks like we need to just queen the pawn here, right? Can the king get out of the way? If we go there, it's the perpetual. If we go there, and we go there next. Okay, that's pretty menacing. Checks always come to mind. Check, king moves, takes, push, takes. We're covering the queen square and we win a piece. That looks good. What am I missing? Check, king, rook takes. Uh huh. What is best? And I've been going quick, but part of my problem is playing too many Blitz games and always feeling like I'm in a hurry. I don't really care about the points. Uh, I need to care more about getting these things right. Probably if, if you're doing this activity with me, pausing videos at the beginning of each problem as soon as I go to the next one is the best way to do it. <laughs> 
All right, rook g2 if king f1. If I push, he takes a queen. This is what I like. Seems like that's got to be the answer. There's no way to get back around to get to the pawn. If I check, his king moves. I take with check, his king takes. I push, he can't catch the pawn. If I just tried to push the pawn, his rook would get behind it. And we queen before you do. The extra bishop really helps. Okay, this is a simple keep the king from getting to the corner problem. You don't get to the corner, my pawn's a runner. Okay. Seems like it should be easy. Check, king moves, king up, check. I'm not seeing it immediately. And this falls in the category of mildly unrealistic in regards to positions. So how would these pawns get so advanced if black still has a knight and bishop? Wouldn't he just sack one of these pieces for one of these pawns earlier before they got so advanced? All right. So black is got to check. If he's able to force a trade in knights here, feel like that should be okay. So if we're being forcing, a7 check is the first move to look at, where black really only has the option of going king a8. If b7, that's a problem because b7, knight d4 check. Knight takes, bishop takes, and we have no way of queening the pawns. So a7 is most forcing and seems like a good place to start. a7, king c8, b7, then b8, queen. a7, king a8, then what though? Initial reaction was king c7, but then if bishop d8, king c8, bishop takes b6, knight takes b6, king takes a7, draw. So maybe it's a7, king a8, king b5. d6, king a6, knight takes c4, b7, mate. It's got to be a7. And this is the, the troublesome move. I want to push this pawn and protect that. I want the best of all worlds. This king c7 doesn't quite work because of that. And then the sacrifice. So I'm thinking here. If I go there and he goes knight d8 though. And I go there and he goes knight b7. Knight a5, knight takes a5, king takes a5, king b7. No dice. Okay. I feel like I'm missing something simple. Typically am. That's why we're doing this after all. King b5, knight d8 doesn't work, and king c7. Does king d7 work? Knight d4, knight takes, bishop takes, king c8. I think king d7 works. 
King d7, if knight d4, what I was worried about. I can take take, and then go king c8. If king d7, king b7, knight a5 check, if he takes a queen, if he goes in the corner, I go back to c8. But if king d7, knight d8, defense. We're back to the same idea. of him being able to blockade. Same thing, king b5 and king d7 both suffer from knight d8, knight b7. So what about b7 check? He takes on a7, we go to c7. Our knight is covering the check of the bishop. And did I make this much harder than I should have by looking at everything except the most forcing move first? Yeah, probably. All right. Survey says the king is in a bad spot. I want to play queen takes d4. And when his king goes to f1, bishop d3, king e1, queen e3, king d1, queen e2, king c1, queen c2 mate. Looks forcing, looks good, looks like we do it. And that puts us over 1,500. So I will put us to a stop on this one. But uh, in the next video, we'll, we'll push from 1,500 on and upwards.